What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to basketball. The NBA has been underway now for enough time to where we can start to make some assumptions about certain teams and players. We can start to look at who's going to win MVP, like who are the top teams right now. And, you know, there's going to be some flip-flop. One thing I want to do is I want to take a look at the lesser-known players that are starting to stand out. So there's 30 teams in the NBA. I'm going to cover 10 of them in each of a three-part video. And we're just going to go and appreciate some lesser-known players that are starting to make a name for themselves or they're just really turning it up from where they already were. I'm just going to use NBA.com here to kind of filter through which teams we're going to go through and which ones we're going to talk about. We're going to do the Boston Celtics first, and I already have the player pulled up that I want to look at. And that's number 30, Sam Hauser. Sam Hauser, for those of you that don't know, is in his third season in the NBA, all season spent with Boston. And Boston's done a good job developing him. As you can see, he came in two and a half points a game, kind of just a bench warmer type guy, got some spare minutes um here and there last year but appeared in all in in 80 of the 82 games this year he's been he's been involved he's up to double digit scoring most important is the statistic right here oh i didn't highlight that as well as i wanted to but we've got the 6.2 three point attempts per game and shooting 47 and a half percent from three you know, on a team with so much star power, you know, even just a like one through six, having a guy like Sam Hauser that's just a torch from outside. Oh, it looks like this this highlight's gonna show misses and makes. That's that's kind of dope, actually. Uh, his form is actually really interesting. I know I was talking about something else, but now I'm like coaching a little bit. His form is kind of interesting because um, one thing we try to teach players when they jump is to there. That was a little better. Uh, we want their feet to come together because if you think about it, when their feet come to can we pause this video please thank you youtube when you bring your feet together you go up at all in one motion then and you can't like deviate to the sides but anyway like i was saying just having all this star power on the team uh when you can accompany it with a wing like sam hauser who you know has a little bit of size so that helps with the switching that they like to do but also he's just a lights out three-point shooter you know that's that's another guy in the court that teams have to stick to otherwise it's three points right i mean he's hitting about half his three-point shots right now and if he's getting six of them up a game you do the math how he's scoring 10 points a game right now right so giving tatum and brown or porzingis drew holiday all these great players just a little bit more space or here they just leave them open right because they're trying to guard the star players and they can get open three point shots that's really valuable all right next team we got here is the brooklyn nets and the next player we're gonna look at is mr cam thomas here now i'm gonna assume that most of you guys are pretty familiar with cam thomas he's a pretty viral player in the nba and that's just because he was kind of an unknown player that just came in and just started getting absolute buckets you come across players like this uh more often than you'd think when you're coaching basketball there's a lot of dudes that can really put the ball in the hoop and that's why like you sometimes see these viral players that are like hey um how how are you not in the league or whatever like a lot of dudes can really score and like really score well maybe even score better than nba players but it's all the other things that they can't do and that's why they're not on an nba roster cam thomas is kind of like one of those dudes that has kind of slipped his way into the league Looking at the 2023-2024 season, and he's missed some games here or there, but he is scoring 27 points a game. That is absolutely nuts. We can make comments all we want about uh, efficiencies or anything, because the efficiency, like, isn't great. Actually, from the mid-range, it's pretty dang good, and, like, around the rim, it's his three-point shot that isn't great. He takes a lot of tough shots, and you kind of live and die with things like that, but it, it you have to be that level of a scorer to where it can justify you being in the league because let's be honest he's probably he's not really the most elite defender he's not playmaking a ton there's not a lot of contribution that necessarily happens outside of the points but when you can score that many points it doesn't matter now him being on the brooklyn nets i think is kind of a perfect situation they don't necessarily have that go-to scorer we kind of expected it to be mccall bridges and it kind of quite hasn't been there this year and then you have guys like ben simmons that are just willing to set him up all day but i mean there's nobody demanding a ton of shots on this team and he's like fuck it i'm taking all the shots i don't care where it's at i'm gonna make them i think what impresses a lot of people too are the difficulty at which he hits shots and the fact that he can hit them no matter the position that he's in on the court or the position of his takeoff for his jumper right like we're seeing there like just creating space right he's just navigating taking it nice and slow getting to his spot 
pulls up, hits the jumper. He gets really high for his jumper too, which is nice. Like he gets a nice high release. The release isn't necessarily fast, but he, he's getting up there to make sure he gets it over his defender. He's also got a nice high arc on it as well, which is nice. You know, that sometimes gives the ball a couple extra opportunities to uh, fall into the hoop. But, I mean, this is an unselfish Nets team that's willing to move the ball around. And, you know, you you want a guy on the team then that's just willing to take shots and try to go get buckets. Like, let's see what kind of shot he puts up here. Like, the fact that he was he had him on his, like, hip a second ago there and then just bounces right into getting squared up again, like, that's a tough thing to do. And I've seen him do things where he's, like, completely driving to the left and then he's like spinning around and turning his body and contorting himself to get like a, a fair position to shoot the ball. And I mean, he gets his elbow aligned and gets it up. And some of that shot making is crazy. So if you weren't already aware of Cam Thomas, let's let's be aware of Cam Thomas. All right, the next team we're looking at is the Knicks. And the player we're looking at is number 23, Mitchell Robinson. Now, Mitchell Robinson is the starting center for the uh, the New York Knicks. Uh, so maybe he's not the most unknown of players, but I think we should give particular like interest to how well he's been playing and how important he is to the New York Knicks. You'll notice scoring is down a bit this year, but the rebounding is what's been crazy. He rebounds at an absurd rate and his defense is what's gotten to be so good. He was always an elite shot blocker. Like he's a phenomenal athlete. He's an alley-oop threat. He's all those cool things, but he was always such a foul problem before and now that he's in what he's in year six already that's that's crazy because he he didn't go to like college or anything i want to say he was committed to michigan at first and then he was like nah i'm just gonna train and then go to the nba or whatever i don't want to do any of that school bullshit which fair enough worked out for him but he's been such an impactful player for them like he is their defense in a lot of ways I think Mitchell Robinson falls into that category of just like he's a role player and he knows his role and I love players like that. Those of you that have been on the channel for what I've had this channel for like two and a half months now. Those of you that like know what I what the hell was that? Oh my goodness. Well, the offense is always going to need work with Mitchell Robinson. But again, we're talking about him being a role player, right? Uh, someone that just knows what they're supposed to do on the court and does it really well. His job is to block shots, play defense, be athletic, be a dunker, right? And most importantly, get rebounds. His rebounding is crazy. Uh, like we were saying, getting about 12 a game right now. And it's early in the season, but I mean, he's a big athletic presence. He's strong. As you can see, he gets up to the rim pretty easily there. Those are great opportunities when you have a couple scores on the team between Randall, Quickly, Brunson, Barrett, like just second chance opportunities. Like that's that's going to be enough between the team defense of this team and just the solid like offensive uh, uh, array of players that they have that any second chance possessions are going to go a long way for the team. All right, next we got the Toronto Raptors and we're going to take a look at Dennis Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder's been in the NBA for a while, and I guarantee you that most of you are pretty familiar with his game, but I was very interested in Dennis Schroeder going into this season, one, because of his play in the FIBA World Cup. Obviously, they took gold. He was their best player. Um, they downed the U.S., which is a, a big deal in itself and a criticism of the Team USA, right, that they lost to that team. But again, Schroeder's been a very, very quality player since he came into the league, and that's why it feels like he's been around for so long. But he's, he's still only 30. You can see earlier on in his career that he was getting you 19, 20 points a game. He was, he was that starting point guard when they moved on from Jeff Teague in Atlanta. And then he got to go to OKC for a little bit. He's he's a starter quality point guard anywhere he goes. And I was like, OK, he he ran into that thing where he turned down a bunch of money and then didn't actually get any money. But uh, Toronto took him in this year and they just lost Fred Van Vliet. So I was like, well, he gets to go back and be a starter this year. So I, I take it he's going to have a good season. And man, you're getting 16 points, seven assists. You're getting a solid 35 percent on five three point attempts a game from three for him, which is I would assume better than most of his career. Uh, he's got points where he's a little bit over, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a better season for him. The thing with Schroeder is the speed, right? I mean, that's that's the thing. Like, I, I don't see too many people that can stay in front of him. You have Drew Holiday on him here, but his ability to navigate the pick and roll is so crazy. You saw it in the World Cup where he was playing with, like, Daniel Tice and Mo Wagner a lot, where he was just, like, facilitating on the pick and roll. And he's got some great guys here in Jakob Pertl and Pascal Siakam that he can really run things through. But this this Toronto team is very unselfish, um, again, because they don't have necessarily a go-to player. Siakam's very 
very, very, very good. But at the end of the day, he's not necessarily a go-to scorer type. He's kind of just a do-everything basketball kind of guy. And I just think we should take some time to appreciate uh, Dennis Schroeder and the career that he's had up to this point. I mean, he's he's been on some really, really good teams. He's been a solid contributor everywhere he went. And this year, he's he's keeping Toronto alive. I believe they're at the time of recording this, they're in the playoff right now or the play in, I should say, which I, I don't know what to think of this Toronto Raptors team. It's just it's so many like solid players. Right. And Schroeder just fits right into that. But man, he he plays with confidence. He plays great defense. He's a great playmaker. He's just a guy that if he's on your team, you are so happy to have him. He's just a great pro basketball player. All right, the next team is my Chicago Bulls, and I'm not going to lie, I had a tough one picking one here, but I'm going to go with Javon Carter. Javon Carter is one of those dudes that just kind of snuck into the NBA, right? Like he was uh, he was a big time college player, so he's a little bit older coming into the league, but he snuck onto a roster. He just fought his way on, and now he's just like a staple NBA player. Like every team would like to have Javon Carter. And while the Bulls don't seem to want to play him as much because they have a poorly constructed roster with like five point guards that they're trying to play in one rotation and like no wings on the team and stuff, uh, they don't like to play Javon Carter. But I'm trying to make a case that he should play more. Currently, he's getting you about six points a game. He's shooting 44% from three in his little bit of minutes. He's still getting up almost four attempts a game. And the man plays ferocious defense. I think one of the things that Bulls fans would agree on is that they want to see him and Caruso on the court more because it causes so much chaos for people trying to play in passing lanes and stuff and for just trying to navigate any sort of pick and roll when they're on offense because Carter and Caruso are just such pests that we'd like to see them play together. And now the Bulls are starting Caruso at the power forward right now just because Patrick Williams is playing that bad and the Bulls just don't have any other options to go to. The Bulls are a disaster. I can't wait for them to trade everybody. I just hope they do. All love to all those players. I like them all individually. It's just a bad team. It's a poorly put together team. So they need to blow it up. But Javon Carter's being wasted here. They just gave him a decent sized contract too. Are we able to see what his contract is? Yeah, they're paying him six, almost $7 million a year to play like 12 minutes a game. Come on, Chicago. Like, why did you sign Desumu? Like Caruso, Kobe White, um, who is, who's the other guy? I mean, obviously Javon Carter, and then they have Lonzo Ball on the team too. Obviously, he's probably never going to play again or whatever. I hope he plays again. I, I think we'll see him on the court again, but who knows to what effect. But like, why why have him on this team? He was such a good contributing factor to the Milwaukee Bucks last year, and you're saying he can't play for this bum team? I don't know. I hope the Bulls realize what they got in Carter because, man, I just I love seeing him on the court. I think he's I think he's a nice change of pace guy. I think he brings the defensive intensity that the Bulls are all about. And yeah, I just I want to see more of him. Next thing we got is the Cleveland Cavaliers. and We don't have to go far down the roster to find Max Struess. So Max Struess, uh, funny enough story, my uh, my business partner was actually the guy that trained him in the G League or whatever, and he was telling me a lot about him. Who's the other guy that he was training? It was the other Heat guy, uh, Gabe Vincent. Yeah, and uh, he actually coached him on the on the one, uh, whatever country he played for, I can't remember, but uh, my buddy was the coach on like their national team or whatever as well and was coaching Gabe Vincent over there. But yeah, he's very tight with him and Struess, and so he's, he's a big fan of the Heat because of that for taking in the players that he put a lot of time into. But yeah, no, we were all curious to see how these Heat players that had played so well under Miami that came out of nowhere would contribute elsewhere, and some have fared better than others. Max Struess has fared very, very well, getting 14 points a game on a team that has a lot of good scores on it, and you're getting up seven almost eight threes a game getting 36 percent that's nuts what are his free throw attempts at yeah i figured those were pretty low but just being a spacer right the the cleveland cavaliers needed a wing so bad on this team and they were like fuck it we're going with Struess. We're, we want Struess. give us Struess. and he has delivered for them he gives spacing to mitchell and to garland and to mobley and to allen it, it's the shooting wing that they needed and he's had just like straight up eruptions of points too. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is his debut game with them this year. He had like 27 points in this one. I remember everyone on the fantasy foot on the fantasy basketball wire, excuse me, wanting to add him to the team. But man, his shooting form is just butter. I've got 
nothing bad to say about it whatsoever. And he's such a competitor out there on defense too. A lot of it coming from those Miami heat days, but notice how he just catch shoots. There's no second thought about it. He's just getting it up and he's got dudes that are going to have the ball most of the time. You know, the Miami heat made him have the ball a lot more because that's kind of how they play. But I think he's so much more effective now that he kind of just gets to be an off ball player. He gets to create some separation. He's got guys on the team that are really drawing in some gravity and Mitchell and Garland and, stuff like that right Mobley even down low that now he just gets to be a shooter and man he is a damn good one under the Detroit Pistons where we're again not having to go very far down on the roster to find who we're looking for I'm looking at Jalen Duran and actually I wanted to look at um Asar Thompson because man I love Asar and Amen Thompson but I just talked about them in the rookie video so I gotta go do Duran I'm not even mad to talk about Duran either. I love Jalen Duran, man. 6'10", 250. Very good size body for a young fella. And let, let's just look at a couple of these stats quick as I get these ads off of here. Getting you 12, almost 13 points a game. And it's not like he creates a ton either. And he's shooting 75% from the free throw line. We love to see that out of our big men. But look at this, 62% effective field goal percentage. He's shooting 63% from two which is awesome, just 62% overall, because I don't believe he's taking like any threes at all. Uh, it looks like he had to maybe chuck one or something, but more importantly, he's getting you about 11 rebounds a game right now. We've seen him post games where he's getting close to like 20 rebounds a couple times this year too, so the rebounding has been absolutely nuts. He's kind of like a, a step up from Mitchell Robinson where he plays really, really uh, aggressive defense. He's really up in people, right? He's got a big body, a big athletic body. He's blocking shots. He's playing off of all the ball handlers that they have in Detroit right now, whether it's Ivy, Kate Cunningham, Killian Hayes. I still don't know why he gets minutes, but Killian Hayes. I, I shouldn't just rat on players like that. I mean, he's obviously a good basketball player, but I just, I don't necessarily see the NBA fit long term. But no, he, he's been uh, kind of like a catalyst to really keep them going. Um, and on the defensive end, it kind of all starts with Duran in Detroit. My my confusion with Detroit was why did they bring James Wiseman in for Sadiq Bay last year? Sadiq Bay seemed like the natural other starter to go with this group to kind of play the four and be a switch defender and a shooter. And they went and brought in Wiseman. I was like, why Duran? We knew Duran was good last year, so I didn't I didn't really understand that. But yeah, like here's a game from this year. You see the 23-15 against my Bulls, of course. Why would we be surprised? We see uh, Asar setting him up. I just love Asar's game so much. But Dern's one of those guys that's just, he's physical. He knows what he's supposed to do. He knows he's, he's supposed to catch the ball, go up with it, and just put the ball in the hoop, right? That's, that's his offensive game. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Pistons are doing a lot to really get those like high low actions. Yeah, you see it kind of right here and stuff. They're they're trying to get high low on teams and because they have bullies down there, dudes that are willing to just go up over everybody. And oh man, you just love the passing and you love the cutting on this team. And they all just they got good hands. They know where to be on the court. I, I like this Pistons team a lot. I know there's been a lot of criticism of Detroit that like oh, they got another good player, but they're not getting any better or anything. And it's like, yeah, I don't really know. Like there's, this team still isn't that good. They've got some young pieces. They don't really have a lot of good players on the team otherwise. So they have three or four good young players, but man, like look at the way he attacks the rim. And I love how he keeps the ball up so high too when he goes up. A lot of times the, like, these bigs and such will bring the ball down. See, that was just unnecessary. That's just rude. But, like they bring the ball down low where people can swipe at it. Like he just keeps it high. And I love that. And let's see how he guards this here. Just goes up. Go give me that. Right. Love it. Love Jalen Duran. All right. We got the Pacers now and we're going all the way down here to Mr. Jalen Smith. So for those of you that don't know, Jalen Smith was a lottery pick by the Phoenix Suns uh, a couple of years ago. And then Phoenix just kind of like quit on him. I, I never understood why. I was like, I, I see the potential in Jalen Smith and who knows what's going on, like in the locker room and with coaches or what whatever reason they had. Right. I'm like, I, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt that they don't just miss talent like that. But it's sure seemed like they did because this guy's a good NBA player currently getting you 11 points about six rebounds off the bench that's killer but look at this only taking one a game but hitting 70 percent of his threes now that's not like realistic obviously and it's a small sample size but like he's a capable outside shooter that's a big that can get up and play defense that can block shots I just I like role players like that man I just like guys that can do a little bit of everything for you off the bench and just be energetic 
Now we could we could spend all day talking about Tyrese Halliburton and how he just makes everybody's lives so much easier on this team, but I just think Jalen Smith has a lot of like really refined basketball skills. Like he's always rolling the right direction. He always seems to be on the right spot on the court, right? Like I feel like he boxes out well. Like he's in good defensive position. Like he set that screen right there like just long enough. Like I just I just like game like that. One of the areas I do think Jalen Smith could be a little better is in his post game. Like, ironically, he doesn't have much for a post game. I'm not sure what highlight they just were showing there, but I think his hands could be like a little bit better. And that's there you go. There's an example. I didn't even like time that up or anything, but that's a goaltend. Yeah, we'll take those. But uh, I think his hands could be a little better. I think his post up game could be a little better, but I think he still provides like a lot of different like offensive uh uh, capabilities. I think he's a strong player, which is nice. You know, you, you want those backup bigs to be physical and really be felt when they get into the game. And I, I think he does that. It, like I see him watching the ball. He's always sees his defender on the blind side, which is great. I, I, I like Jalen Smith a lot. Let's see what he does here. Let's, let's get up. Let's get over. Still brought the ball a little low there, but I don't know. He's an underrated contributor to what's a pretty solid uh, Indiana offense this year. All right, last team we're looking at is the Bucks, and we're looking at Malik Beasley. The Malik Beasley signing by the Milwaukee Bucks was a phenomenal signing. Malik Beasley is pretty much the same player everywhere he goes. Dude just gets he gets buckets, like not in like a normal like bucket getter sense where like he can score from everywhere, but the dude's just a shooter. You look at the percentages throughout the years, like by the time he's established in the NBA, we see 40, 38, 36, 42, 40, 37. Looks like a little bit of a drop off here. He was kind of between teams. It looks like 35, 35, shooting 46% right now on a team that obviously draws a lot of attention from players outside of him. But that's exactly what he is. I'm pretty sure he's a minimum contract player too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, no, he's on a minimum contract, a one year, two and a half a uh, million dollars that's a minimum for someone of his tenure in the nba but getting you 11 points he's shooting the shit out of the basketball uh the free throw percentage is actually poor but he hasn't taken very many um he's not really getting assists he's uh, he gets three or four rebounds a game i don't even know does he start yeah no he starts for them which makes a lot of sense he'd be the logical starter on this team next to all these other players but kind of like when we talked about sam hauser at the beginning of the video you have all these star players man you just need guys that can switch a little bit, that have a little bit of size, that can be consistent three-point shooters so that when they do send that double or they do hard hedge on uh, Dame or Middleton coming off a screen or something, that they can kick it over. Maybe they get a second more of space because Malik Beasley's on the floor to knock down a shot. Malik Beasley's pretty cool too because he's one of those dudes that when he gets hot, he really starts to chuck. And like, look, he can put the ball on the floor a little bit, which is nice. Uh, his shooting form is very, very pure. He had that one season for Minnesota where I thought he was really going to explode for them. And then they just weren't really very good at managing that team. But you see how he goes out and gets the ball for that too? I love that. He's got a little bit of attitude to him. It's 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 nice. You like that out of your shooters too. It's kind of like a wide receiver. You want him to be really confident. And he's just always in the right spot. He knows he's out there to go get buckets. Oh, look at that. He's talking some shit to the fans. Ooh, this was a couple days ago at the time of filming that he was doing this. I haven't like really watched these highlights. Like, Look at him saucing Grady Dick up. Grady Dick's had a rough start to his career, but I think it's going to be just fine i just kind of want to watch this highlight a little bit so dame splits he sees him in the corner again pat Connaughton hits him with a nice screen to make sure he stays open yeah absolutely he's still talking shit yeah he said y'all better know my name i'm not talking shit to malik beasley man that dude is a torch oh yeah say some more to him oh i thought he was gonna say some more to him oh y'all see that dude down there after he hit it look at this just down here he said oh damn he really got our ass he is cooking hey hey Nah, Malik Beasley's tough, man. Y'all, y'all gotta know who this is. The, our, the Lakers should have kept him. The uh, Lakers could really have used him, but the Bucks are reaping the benefits of having him right now. And that does it for part one, y'all. I'm gonna do the rest of the teams in a parts two and three. So, uh, y'all, y'all, let me know your thoughts and everything. What players from these teams should I be talking about more? Who am I missing? You know, I don't get a chance to watch every game. I try to watch a lot of them, but I'm, I miss people, man. So. Feel free to let me know. And hey, appreciate you guys always for watching. I really do appreciate it. And um, yeah, stay tuned for the next one. Thanks so much, y'all. Bye.